Hey everybody, welcome back to Brick System Brothers. We are going to get a little bit technical today with Studio functionality. Studio is a digital Lego builder. If you are not familiar with this program at all, you should probably not start at this video. Uh, I will be jumping right into some somewhat advanced techniques and uh, usage of the software. So maybe start somewhere else if you are looking for getting started in this program. Personally, I find it pretty powerful um, somewhat intuitive, this, the learning curve may be a little bit steeper, but once you're up and running in the software, it does make a lot of sense from, you know, user standpoint and where things are at, all those tools. It takes a little practice to get up to speed, but once you're there, pretty powerful stuff. Uh, one thing that I would like to show today is some functionality for getting a themed part list in Studio. That is the main point of the video. Uh, a little introduction from this guy right here. This is a uh, uh, future on. Yeah, I think that's the theme. So the functionality to import just the parts for a given set, that does exist in Studio, and that is pretty surface level. Um, so just as another example here, let's show how that would happen, how you'd go about doing that from the file to the import official Lego set. And then you're just gonna type in the set number that you wanna import um, to build that future on model. That was 6932. And it pulls it up there. And there's some options for, you know, if you want minifig pieces and extra pieces. Um, what this does is it will reduce the parts palette to just the parts in that set. And an example would be 6491. Let's look at the Time Cruisers Rocket Racer. I'll go ahead and see if we can bring in the minifig pieces, but one thing that I will be seeing and mentioning later, um, a lot of older sets do not have um, all of the minifig parts accounted for in studio. So that's something you're gonna to have to watch out for. Most of the time the set parts themselves are just fine. And then there's one final thing you can distinguish here. You can choose to import it in the scene, which will actually put all the pieces here in your workspace. But today we're working with palettes and the palette is the parts list over here on the side. So let's click import. And of course our freestyle Timmy torso and the Timmy head are not available in Studio. And there's also a link to instructions if you want to get to building it right away. Pretty handy stuff. And we can see our palette over here has been auto named 6491 Rocket Racer with just the parts from this set. Here it is on Rubricable for reference. Smaller set in the Time Cruiser's theme. Not the greatest picture there, but you get the idea. You have a limited selection of parts, so you're not, you know, if you're otherwise looking at a completely new list, you're really slogging through thousands of parts. Uh, and if you're just trying to build a set, it is very helpful to have that narrowed down to the pieces in that set. So jumping off from that topic, um, what I want to cover today is what does it look like to have a parts palette, but instead of being just a single set, at one end or the master parts palette at the other end with almost all of the parts in the inventory. What if I just wanted a parts palette with the parts in a certain Lego theme like Futuron or Time Cruisers for example. So it takes a little bit of effort and um, use, using the Bricklink website but it is definitely possible to end up with that goal. Let's walk through it. All right, step one, Bricklink. You want to be on V2, which is the older version of the page. Um, since Lego bought Bricklink, they have been working on the R3 version, which is kind of the, the modern one, but V2 gives you a lot more functionality with parts lists, so we're going to start here. Um, next, choose a theme. Today I will be looking at the Time Cruisers theme. Let's search it. Let's look at all of the sets here 
on Bricklink. And I guess I'll mention here your parts list in Studio for your theme is only going to be as good as the Bricklink inventories. So if something is incorrect in Bricklink, that is going to carry over into the parts list. Um, the nice thing about kind of having this be a crowd sourced database is especially for the older sets most of the errors that have been introduced over the years do get corrected by the community so I'm pretty confident all these inventories are right the one thing for some of the older sets again is um, there might be part variants where in a certain range of years there were two different mold variants out for a part and that's really just a personal preference you know are you going to use the one with the open studs or the solid studs it's not as crucial when you're actually looking at you know how the part goes together it's the same basic shape it does the same thing it's just a cosmetic difference at that point so I am going to draw a distinction here and I'm gonna say I want a parts palette with just the uh, time cruiser protagonist sets which is these four here the theme itself actually has the time twister sets as well uh, so these are kind of the bad guys but I'm going to look at these four sets and see if I can build a palette out of the parts that are common between them. So I'm going to open each one of these in a new tab and work my way backwards from there. Starting at the large one here, 6494, you use the part out functionality under the wanted list header. And that auto loads the set number into the part out. Um, and then this is going to be working within a wanted list instead of um, you know putting things in an inventory or selling this is all focused on a wanted list and that's kind of what gives the whole thing functionality here as we will see you have plenty of options when it comes to um, you know what do you want to put in your list of course we want to have the parts we want to have the minifigs um, this set also had some gear with it. I'm going to leave those out because that gear is probably not going to be in studio and I'd really just like to focus on the parts themselves. I'm also going to come over here and part out the minifigs all the way down. Another option you can do is to include extra pieces, um, but at this point if I'm just going to have a parts palette, the extra pieces are already going to be represented in the set inventory, so I'm not going to worry about clicking that. Now this is the first one of the four in the series. So I am going to create a new list for this and call it Time Cruisers. Condition does not matter here. Um, again, this is just an intermediate step that we're using to build up this studio parts palette. So all of this is not very crucial to the process. Now there is a second step here where you submit it for edit and this kind of gives you an opportunity to look things over, to make sure everything looks good. At the bottom, there might be something with alternative molds. So let's get down there and see what we've got. We also see here our individual minifig components. I'll be coming back to those. And it looks like there are no alternate molds here. So we're gonna add this to the wanted list and we have a success message. All right, that set is done. On to the next one. Once again, my wanted list, part out. Auto load the set number parts and minifigs, part out the minifigs, and now we're going to choose that time cruisers wanted list. It already exists. Submit this for edit, and now we're going to get into uh, certain parts that are actually already loaded from the first set. Again, we are not worried about quantity this time around because as a parts palette, it will basically be uh, unlimited quantity. You can just pull from the part as long as you want to use it. So quantity in the wanted list does not matter. I'm going to leave them in, um, but you can actually see how many of the parts are shared between different sets when you're looking at this yellow notice here. Get down to the bottom, add it in. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for the other two sets. Let's go ahead and take a look at our wanted list now. 254 total items. This also is a good spot to look through and see if anything needs fixing. Um, it should all be directly imported as long as you go through those steps. 
And there is one more intermediate step I'm going to do here related to the minifig torsos. The torsos themselves is actually another subassembly of individual components. So even though I told Bricklink to break down the minifigs, um, that torso does not get completely broken out. So this is still uh, a subassembly. I'm going to open these two torsos up. And it's nice to work within a smaller theme because we're only looking at two different items here. Uh, we're going to do the same process again with the part out. This time it looks a little bit different. Um, we are not parting out a set. We are parting out a part is how Bricklink tracks it. Um, but yeah, we're going to choose that same wanted list. And there's no uh, secondary options this time either. A hand, torso, and of course the arms are already paired as well. So if you really want to get all of the individual components, you're going to have to go in and break the arms out in the same fashion right here. At this point, especially if there's a lot of different torsos and different colors, it might be faster to just add it directly to the parts palette when you're actually in studio. Add to one list. Let's go ahead and add this printed torso. Unfortunately, these torsos will probably not be in studio anyway, but I'm going to walk through the whole process. If you guys want to apply this in a general sense, and here is the completely broken out list. Left and right arms, two torsos. All right. Once you have all of the sets that you want from a theme in a single parts list, we'll be using the download. And it's going to give you an XML document. Name it something that you can find that makes sense. Now let's get into studio here. All that work on the back end is basically what we are going to work with now in Studio. From the palette selector, it's on master palette right now, I'm going to use the configuration option all the way at the bottom of the menu. And we're going to choose a way to add a new palette. Import a wanted list. Okay, so the bottom two both do the same thing. The first of the options is without quantity, and the second option actually includes a quantity. So if you want to work with a very restricted set of parts, but more parts than just a single set, um, you can actually create that wanted list with the quantities that you want, and then you can use this secondary one to import not only a given set of pieces, but also a certain quantity for each piece. So very specific functionality here. Um, you know, it's cool that this is all built in. For this time around, I'm going to import without quantity. That's going to open up the dialog where I can actually choose that wanted list I already made. Time Cruiser's right here. Open it, and it loads it into my custom palettes. We can just close this out now, and we should have this Time Cruiser's palette available over here in our palette selector. Now, since I did it without the quantity restriction, this is just going to give you the part itself and it's not going to limit how many you can place. So basically this palette kind of represents what pieces are present in the four sets of that Time Cruiser's theme. And from within here, you know, you could look at, you know, what does it look like to have a mock that's an alternate of multiple sets? That would be one application. Uh, you could also say, I just want to kind of have some challenge building mode and work with a restricted set of parts. You can do that as well here. Um, so I think it's a little bit of work on the front end to actually get to this point. I think this is the fastest way to do it. Um, just in terms of building out a custom part palette, you can also add things one by one to palettes from the master palette. So if I go back here, to all the parts and let's say I want to put this guy in a palette you can right click and choose a palette to put this in and you can do that one part at a time uh, for as many parts as you want but especially when you're looking at 
you know, a set of a theme where you're probably going to have 100 to 200 different pieces, I think it's helpful to get a little bit of automation in there where you can pull from a file and and do a lot of things at once on the Bricklink side before you bring that into Studio. So yeah, a little bit of a niche topic looking at the software today. You might have seen the other custom palette I built out to practice is the Rock Raiders palette. So the next step here is actually figuring out um, how to get these shared. And I think, you know, once you have that, that wanted list XML, it's, um, it's just something that you can email. If we open this up and, uh, and take a look at what we've got in here, you know, what does it actually look like? What is studio reading? It's, uh, it's not very user friendly. It's more machine code than anything. So, um, this is probably the file that you're going to want to pass around when you're looking at how to actually share a palette with somebody and then from there um, people can just open it up and use that import process you can also export a completed palette so if I export with this box that's going to give another XML file and it's going to put a, uh, a palette thing on here on the name this is actually a different looking file. Let me get it open, I'll show you. Okay, this is what we got out of Bricklink, and this is what I just exported from Studio. It's a little bit cleaner, it's definitely more readable just from you know a human standpoint than this thing is. Um, but once you get looking into the details, it's really the same information, just cleaned up a little bit. Um, so I haven't actually tried, but you might be able to use this to import the palette as well. Let's try it. It looks like it did it. Yeah, that's perfectly readable as well. Good deal. So either one of those text files, um, I think they're just XMLs, is what you can pass around on email or Google Drive or you know whatever you use to send files around. I think that's kind of going to be the sharing functionality that you're looking for um, once you have actually built this out and if you're looking to you know collaborate with somebody and uh, someone else might have a different palette or you know making these guys available somewhere to download okay mission accomplished um, that is how you can kind of build out a custom palette looking at a given theme um, the theme is kind of the the intuitive application of this method but I think this same functionality can be used to build out other palettes um, and I have a few things in the back of my mind I want to be working on that I'm not quite ready to um, you know, f put in video form yet um, but they're definitely following the same approach of what software tools are out there to you know, make these complex tasks a little bit easier I mean it's not a simple thing by any means but it's definitely faster than going through one by one and adding pieces and end result definitely worth 10-15 minutes of time to be able to say well yeah I want to build some alternate Rock Raiders stuff um, but I want to be sure I'm only using pieces that were found in Rock Raiders sets well here you go a Bricklink Studio custom parts palette with the aid of a Bricklink wanted list seems kind of the way to go to me um, if there's a faster way to do it I'd be interested uh, in other work that people have done. Drop a comment below. Otherwise, I uh, hope this was helpful for the very few people who <laughs> will probably find this interesting. And keep an eye out for some similar stuff coming down the road here on Brick System Brothers.